Hey everybody, good morning greetings from Arlington, Texas, delivering at U.S. Foods, and we have been assigned to door 12. Today is Sunday, uh, July 17. 2022 the uh, temperature here is 86 degrees door 12 all right the instructions is uh, to line up on the door but do not open the door yet They will call me when they are ready to unload. <laughs> One shot, Johnny. One shed Johnny. Yes, sir. One shed Johnny's back today. <laughs> that is so cool. I wish one shed Johnny would always come with me, you know? There you go. All right, be right back. Hey everybody, John, if you could hear, hello and uh, good morning readings once again. Readings from Arlington, Texas. So today is Sunday, July 17, I believe. Yep, 17. Local time here is 9.47. We are empty and headed to uh, Danone in Fort Worth, Texas, which is 21 miles. <coughs> All right, the temperature in Sheboygan is 69 degrees. The yuck took 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Dead Horse Alaska is 35 degrees. That's not bad. But it's a little bit cloudy up there right now. Coldfoot is 51 degrees. Overcast. Judo, 55 degrees. Boy, it looks like winter starts really early over there. Anchorage, 54 degrees. Banff, Canada, 63 degrees. Sunny but cloudy. Glacier National Park, 54 degrees. Man, we gotta go. We gotta go. You know, when you gotta go, you gotta go. There's no way, two ways about it. No doubt about it. You gotta go. All right, a uh, couple of things that's going on today is that uh, there are the boss is trying to move the pieces the jigsaw pieces
pieces, these are puzzle pieces, so that it will fit together. As I mentioned in the previous video, Long Haul Area has some kind of a family emergency uh, that he needs to attend to. I was going to deliver a load to Allentown today, Sunday. Then I was going to deadhead to Elizabeth, New Jersey. Pick up a load delivered to somewhere Capitol Heights, I believe. Yeah, Capitol Heights, Maryland. And then pick up somewhere around Maryland, bring it to the yard. Then I was gonna fly home. But since Larry has this issue. Oh, while I'm scheduled to do all of this, right? In my part. And on the other side of the coin, the boss has designated long haul area to deliver a load, which this was load, this load was, go back to the yard, no, deliver the load, pick up in uh, Fort Worth, which the load that I'm doing now. And then somehow he was going to end up driving, you know, delivering the load to Allentown, picking up a load in Virginia, I suppose, delivering to Oak Creek, Wisconsin, and then on next week, sometime next week, he was going to pick up a load. out of Luxembourg, Wisconsin, delivering to Perth Amboy, New Jersey. But now that Long Haul Larry is out of commission, I am relegated to do his load. I know this one. I perfected this last week. <laughs> I, every time I go through here, I always get lost and always end up going east on 30. Not today, buddy. Not today. Wham, I just messed the exit. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, I told Long Haul Larry, I said, uh, Larry, would you consider driving or, you know, riding Goldie back to the shop? That way I don't have to take a plane. I hate flying now. But all the BS, all the nonsense that goes on around the airport today, Cancellations by thousands and thousands of flights every day. All the TSA checks and if you say the wrong thing at the airport or the aircraft, they'll either boot you out of the aircraft or they'll put you in jail. <laughs> oh, jeez. The atmosphere on aircraft right now, or airliners, among passengers is just so, so hot. It is just like a hot potato. I told Long Haul Larry, I said, man, you'd be doing me a favor if whatever situation you're, you got yourself, as far as your family goes, 
if everything works out well, would you consider riding Goldie back to the shop? One biggest reason is I hate flying, as I mentioned. The other reason is that I've got so much stuff in my truck. Even though right now I consider it bare minimum. So I told them, I said, uh, you'd be doing me a favor if you could ride Goldie and, and Woody to the shop so I can I can put all my stuff inside uh, Woody and what would be a better way to go home than riding Goldie and Woody right all right one of the reasons you guys are probably asking why do you need to take all your stuff out of your truck? A um, couple of reasons. The boss wants my truck to be as cleaned out as possible because he's going to hire a professional detailer or truck cleaner. And then uh, the other reason is, I don't want other people, I don't know how many people will be, I'm sure somebody at the shop will be using your race for local runs or whatever. I don't want people, other drivers out there using my stuff. You know what I mean? By the way, just a little bit of an update. Until now, they cannot find a turbo. There's no turbo to be had, to be had nationwide. Imagine that there's no turbo available to be to, uh, you know, to be bought right now. One of the options that they are forced to think about is to rebuild this existing turbo. But even then, they can't find the right parts for it. Because you know who, you know who, right? <laughs> All because of you know who. Ah, oh, that Putin guy. That Putin guy is no good. <laughs> Fort Worth. 15 miles. Zip it, zip it, zip it. Texas, everyone. The temperature is at 93 degrees. The local time is 10 10 a.m. Yeah, this is where I picked up uh, the load the other day. Hey, let me try something, okay? This is kind of a what if, why not? You know, 
Now there's a big stink between the federal government and Texas right now. Everybody knows Texas has got a lot of oil and natural gas and all that stuff. Unfortunately, the federal government is prohibiting Texas from exploring all those natural resources. There's also been a very big dis disagreement between how to handle the border. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has been apprehending the le illegal aliens at the border, put them on a bus, drive them back to the gates of Mexico and leave them there. To which the federal government said, you can't do that. That's a federal issue. So whatever, you know, one the, the United States federal government thinks differently from what Texas thinks. So here's what my what if. I think it's safe to say that the United States needs Texas but Texas doesn't really need the United States I think Texas can survive on its own what would happen if Texas were to secede I hope I'm pronouncing that right secede from the United States What if Texas was to break away from all the 48 states and become a sovereign country like it did, you know, like it did once before? Can you imagine if Texas was allowed to govern itself? Uh, you know, drill all the oils, all the natural gases and all that stuff. Oh man, I tell you, that, <laughs> that's that's an imagination I can't even fathom, you know. Texas was to drill their own natural resources, their own oil, all their gas, and sell it, or even just use it inside Texas. Yeah, but then again, I'm sure the federal government will find a way to screw that up. They'll probably tax and what else? Tariff. They'll probably use more tariff to Texas than they do with Iran or Iran or. Uh, Russia. The federal government will probably ban Texas from doing business outside. From what I understand, In order for a state to secede from the country, the Congress has to approve it. Sound. Here's a thought. What if Texas did manage to secede from the country? And whatever political aisle you belong to, or whatever state is, for example, all the blue, all the blue states will have a coalition of free 
trading to each other. And all the red states, you know, become one one country. And not one country, but different states, but you know, red to red, blue to blue. One more thing before I go. I listen to Bill O'Reilly quite uh, frequently. And Bill O'Reilly predicts that Joe Biden will probably retire by January of next year. He's not gonna he's not gonna serve the full term. And he's just going to, for health reasons, he is going to quit. And then, uh, well, that makes Kamala Harris the uh, vice president and Pelosi the vice president, right? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, everybody, we've been assigned to door two. Sunday drive. <laughs> oh, boy, are we going to make it? No, we're not going to make it. Time is 12:06 already. Yeesh. Okay, so I have just been reading all the comments about yesterday's video and uh, overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, all of you have suggested that I should just put off the Alaska trip. And just do locally. I'll do everything else except Alaska. Still go to Canada, Glacier, but not Alaska. Overwhelmingly, the consensus is that I'm rushing things and I'm running out of riding season, which is absolutely correct. And I also thought that, you know, well, 
lot of you actually the one that are suggesting that the prices right now are so outrageous that it's not such a bad idea to put it up until next year you know and quite possibly that if I go next year I could save thousands of dollars but more importantly if I go to these uh, Montana Idaho local trips I could get my my uh, camping the motorcycle parts the, the riding it's not a big deal I mean you know, I was, I've been on the road for 31 years, so it's not that big of a deal. My biggest concern really is the camping part, where to find the camp, you know, get that experience and get acquainted with that. Because I'm sure there are going to be a lot of mistakes made, a lot of mistakes made, and uh, also there's going to be a lot of uh, learning I have to do. So there's that, you know. And honestly, I am leaning more and more into that possibility. That is now more appealing to me than going to Alaska. So, you know, one thing that's true is that if I do Glacier and BAMP Jasper and all that stuff this year I won't have to do that next year so there will be more time you know what I mean more time to go to Alaska right it's like doing the whole trip in two parts part A just do the local stuff and then God willing next year then do the Alaska part what do you think let me know in the comments please and don't forget to subscribe give it a thumbs up and please kindly share this video so we can grow this channel the more this channel grows the more we the more contents like that like this I can I could make and upgrade some of the uh, video equipment and all that stuff so if you find any value to this the videos of mine kindly share it I greatly appreciate it peace hey everybody it's time for some doing some cooking okay this steak has been marinating in my refrigerator for about two days it's this head country seasoning plus uh, lemon juice so this should be good this should be very very good oh the price of meat right now is just so incredibly expensive some people are turning into vegans <laughs> which is I think that's the full plan I think the government realized that we're too fat we're too lazy to walk so that's why they have raised the prices is it fit is it fit is it fit <laughs> okay so how about uh, 15 minutes on air fry so we'll be right back and of course what would be a steak dinner without uh, beans right uh, found this at Walmart one of those kind of a single meal kind of a thing so yeah, warmed that up and put it in the microwave there that should be good later yeah I don't have my shirt on because it's way too hot haha <laughs> okay here's our beans bush beans 
two minutes. Let's check on our uh, steak here. I think we'll be all right. Yeah, they'll be all right. Eh, that's more than enough. I like my steak to say, Moo! That hurts! You know what I mean? I want my steak to say, Moo! That hurts so much! By the way, Here's a guy I've been following for a while. His name is Craig, and he is uh, his channel is named uh, Living Off the Slab. Type in Living Off the Slab. Go to his playlist and find Alaska, and that's where I've been getting all my uh, most of my information. So. All right, here we go. Oh boy. What do I need? Oh, I need to. I need a. I need a knife. I don't know if I can. I don't know if this will work or. Not no. Let's cut into this baby. What's a steak without A1? Seriously. I mean, it. seriously. Ooh, I should have covered this. <laughs> Look at that microwave. Sheesh. Bon appetit, everyone. Later. Mmm. <laughs>